Hello and welcome to the first video in a series that I'm going to be doing on how to beat the house at roulette. Now we're going to achieve this, or we're going to attempt to achieve this, using physics and Python. I came across a paper here. I'll put the link in the description. It's called Roulette Physics by J.I. Eichberger. I highly recommend that you go familiar if you want to follow along with this tutorial series you should familiarize yourself with this paper read the entire thing so you have a background um, in, in what we're going to be covering also I recommend that you have basic knowledge of, of dynamics um, rotational motion orbital motion uh, in addition to that you should have a background in uh, numerical techniques, numerical integration, uh, parameter optimization, uh, minimization, gradient descent, things like this. Um, we're going to be attempting to put all this together into a Python package later down the road that maybe can be implemented on the floor of a casino. Um, and you might be wondering how we how we would achieve that and that's because this paper actually provides a framework for taking measurements in the casino um, and those measurements are actually just this the timing of how long the revolutions take so one two three and you would keep you would do that for like the last four spins before the ball falls off the track and you would repeat this process like five to six times probably so one two three four and you would keep doing that and saving those measurements and you would do this all before you even play and then before you sit down you would clock that you would wait for the dealer to spin the wheel uh, one time and you would do the same thing you would clock the wheel and then you would sit down so having the wheel clocked you know what position it's in at every at any point in time and then theoretically we would be able to improve our prediction power so I'm gonna just dive right into it and first off, we're going to start with equation 35. Or we're going to start out in section 5, parameter estimation. This section is all about um, making those initial measurements, like I said, and putting those together to estimate some parameters that way we can make predictions later. So we're not going to start out doing physics um, in these early videos. We're going to start out doing some numerical techniques to find these parameters. Um, and so this is the equation that we're going to start with today. This equation is a least squares. And this is the sum of the squared residuals of this model. Um, this model can be found in equation 35. This is a model for the the lap time. And as you can see, this, this is a function of k. And k is the number of the revolution since the first one that we started measuring that we're interested in. So the first revolution that we measure is 1. There's also a k up here. So you can see that this function, um, this function decays. I mean this or this is exponential and I'm not going to get into or I don't really know off the top of my head the behavior of this inverse hyperbolic sine sine hyperbolic uh, I don't really understand what the effect of that is but I do know that over time that the lap time increases and you can just see that by watching uh, the ball slows down so the time around increases so Basically what we do is we take a bunch of measurements, tk, this is a vector of measurements of increasing times, 
and we fit this model to the to those measurements. So we're basically going to do a curve fit, but we're trying to fit A, B, and C0, or C0, to it. Uh, the author here suggests that we use the Levenberg, Levenberg Markart for nonlinear non least squares estimation. Um, we'll we'll sh try that at first, um, but I think that there's other methods that are a little more powerful. This um, paper was written in 2003, and I came across a method, a more recent method that um, can handle a wider range of experimental data uh, with more consistent results. So let's go ahead and get right into this. Um, you can just use a regular text editor, editor and a Python console. I prefer to use PyCharm CE. Um, that's because I can access a bunch of different files here. I can do debugging. Um, you know, I like the way it looks. Other things like that. And and I can even go over here. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Edit configurations under run. And I can turn on the Python console over here. Show command line afterwards. That way I can access variables after I run. After runtime. So... Um, to do this tutorial, uh, we're gonna first we're gonna need SciP. Next, let's just go ahead and dive in to this equation here. So we're gonna want to just define some function because we want to minimize this. Okay, this is essentially the error between our model and the collected data. So to minimize that function, we'll create what's called an objective function that we will pass into a SciP optimization routine later on. So let's call this function rev time for revolution time. And we'll make it a function of x naught and tk. Now, x0 is just going to be a vector for us to store our initial, or to store our variables in. Um, this is going to make it easier later, just so we don't have to type. I mean, we type the same amount, but I think this is just a little bit cleaner. I have, this, I have this all backwards. What am I doing? Hopefully no one caught that. I was like, all right, I'm leaving the video now. This guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing. I am sort of new to Python. I've um, been working on some algorithmic trading product or projects for the last about two years. So I'm about two years into Python. Okay. So now that we have A, B, and C, let's go ahead and just define this inner function here. That way we can subtract it off from our collected data, which is TK. And TK is a vector. And you know, just for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and put um, a TK in there. Um, this is actually a TK that uh, that I that I measured. Um, from that video that I showed you. So we'll measure these in a later video. I'm going to show you the way I did it. But for now, this is the increasing time. Um, and it, if you want, I can go ahead and do All right, so as you can see here, the revolution time increases with the number of laps. So there's the first lap, second, third, fourth, fifth, um, and this is the total time. So this is a, it's a cumulative uh, time. So if, if we wanted to see the actual decay um, per lap, we would have to subtract off the previous lap from each one, um, from each element. 
Sorry, my dog is barking in the background. All right, so we're going to and define this inner function here. So one over a times b times c naught minus p dot arc arc sine h. sine h b0 times on p dot exp the exponential function a times k times 2 times pi okay and the only thing that we don't have here is k and so k is we're going to use a range, or I don't know how to pronounce that because it's not spelled the same way. But we're going to go from 1 because k starts at 1 in this equation. You can see here k in the sum starts at 1. And then we're going to go to the length of tk plus 1. And what this will give us is basically the number of laps. So if we do like print k and then we call this function and then we just throw in like one, two, three, and then tk. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's perfect. That's what we need. So we have k in here. Let me just make sure this equation is all set. There we go. Okay. So now that we have this function here, let's go ahead and finish it up. We can finish it up in one line, in the return line. So we're going to return the sum, tk minus the model. Basically what we did here is we evaluate the model for the given a, b, and c0, c0, and we evaluate it subtract it from k or tk to get the um, to get the residuals and that's basically a really basic way of measuring the error of the model um, and then a more popular way to measure it is what we're doing here is the square of the residuals and so then later the least square of the residuals so we'll square that and we'll take the sum since this is going to be a vector because it has a k, a k as a vector and uh, tk is also a vector. So that should hopefully return the error associated with the function. So let's test it out. So do print rev time. And we'll, we'll just throw in some dummies here for a, b, and c. One, two, and three. Um, we should expect the error to be very high on this because we're just guessing and we're fitting it to TK. So let's go ahead and run that. As you can see here, the error is about 4,638, which is totally unacceptable. Um, later, that basically means that our, our guess for 1, 2, and 3 is, is off, super off. So I think. Uh, we're just going to do this off the top of my head. I bet you we can get the error pretty low if we guess this. Oh, no. Try again. Okay, well, you get the point. Um, so this is pretty much going to conclude the first um, tutorial video. So later um, in the next video, I will go over um, taking the measurements here so we can get some data, multiple um, data so we can take some averages. And so if we can find these parameters, um, it'll be easier. And we will move to this part, which is freezing the neck, freezing the variables that we find and refining them um, and then finding more variables the same way later on. And so we're just essentially going to work our way through all this 
and hopefully at the end we can put together a, a, a Python package or a C package or something um, to do live testing with it. Um, that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video and look out for the next video.